In part A of this experiment, we're going to use thin layer chromatography or TLC to separate a mixture of three compounds, fluorine, fluorinol, and fluorinone. And then based on the results of our known samples, we'll be able to determine which compounds are in our unknown sample. We are going to start by spotting 2% solutions of each of our compounds on our TLC plate. So we have our 2% fluorine solution, our 2% fluorinol solution, our 2% fluorinone solution, our unknown number two in which we need to identify which compounds are in it, and our reference mixture which contains fluorine, fluorinol, and fluorinone. This is our TLC plate and it consists of silica gel on an aluminum backing. And we're going to spot each of our compound solutions one centimeter up from the bottom of the TLC plate using a micro cap or a very thin capillary tube. After spotting all of our samples on our TLC plate, we need to prepare a development chamber. And this is our development chamber. And the first thing we need to do is place a piece of filter paper to serve as a liner inside of our development chamber. Once moistened with our solvent, the filter paper liner will help saturate the development chamber with our solvent vapors. The solvent that we will be using for this experiment is methylene chloride. We're going to transfer approximately five milliliters of methylene chloride to our development chamber while making sure to completely saturate our filter paper with the methylene chloride. We'll then place our TLC plate inside the development chamber and allow the TLC plate to develop. We'll remove the TLC plate once the solvent front is within one to two centimeters of the top of the TLC plate. And you need to remember to mark the position of the solvent front on the TLC plate as soon as you remove the TLC plate from the development chamber. This way you can calculate your RF values. Once our TLC plate has completely dried, we'll place it in an iodine chamber until the spots begin to appear. This is our fully developed TLC plate. You can now calculate the RF values for each of our three compounds. You can also identify the compound or compounds that were in our unknown mixture. This concludes part A of this experiment.